Hey everyone, it's Paul from One Cast One Fish, and welcome back to our series on the Garmin Striker Fish Finder. If you haven't already checked out the previous six classes covering the sonar and menu options on the Garmin Striker Fish Finder, I'm going to leave those links down in the description, so please be sure to check those out as they really go in depth on the sonar side of the fish finder. In the next few classes, we're going to be covering GPS features such as tracks, routes, and waypoints. And here in class number seven, we're going to start by diving into tracks. However, before we get started, there is one thing I do want to point out, and that's the Garmin Striker models with quick draw contour maps are going to have some additional GPS features as a result of the available quick draw maps. And that's why if you're using the Garmin Striker Fish Finder for more advanced navigation, I'm going to recommend the more advanced Garmin Striker Fish Finders with that available contour mapping. As that quick draw contour mapping and those additional features are going to make your navigating experience a whole lot more enjoyable. Now let's get started discussing tracks. The track feature shows you where you've been on the waypoint map. So another way to look at the track feature is that it's a history of where your vessel's been in the past. Let's scroll down and select waypoint map. Here on the waypoint map you can see some tracks from past uses on the fish finder. Let's zoom in a bit and take a better look at the current track. Now we're going to look at some of the menu options for our tracks. Let's press the menu key. Now scroll down and select track. Here we can select track, track options, clear track, or follow track. Let's start by selecting track. Our first option lets you turn your tracks to show or hide. Turning the tracks to hide will hide all your tracks on the waypoint map. Now we're going to look at how to change our track recording mode on our fish finder. Now let's go back to our track menu and select track options. Here we can change our recording mode, recording interval, and our track color. Let's select record mode. The record mode allows you to decide what way you would like your Garmin Striker to record tracks and save them to the fish finder. Our options are off, fill, and wrap. If you turn the record mode to off, the fish finder will show your current track. However, the fish finder will not save your track for reference later when you turn your fish finder back on. Selecting the record mode to fill, the fish finder will record and save tracks until the memory is full. Speaking of the memory being full, this is a good opportunity to remind you that you can view your current track memory usage by pressing the menu key on the waypoint map and selecting track. The memory usage is displayed on the bottom of the screen. Back to our record modes again, we can also select wrap. This will continuously record a track and as the memory fills, the oldest data will automatically be replaced by the newest data. Now let's look at how to adjust the track recording interval. However, there's one thing I want you to keep in mind when adjusting the track interval. If you set your fish finder to record at shorter intervals, it's going to record more points within your track. This is going to make your track more exact. However, when having a shorter record interval and more points recorded for your track, you're also going to use more memory. In all honesty, I've had no issues with just leaving my record intervals at the factory default settings. Let's go back to the track option menu. Now scroll down and select record interval. Here we can select our recording intervals, basically how often the fish finder saves a point to build our tracks. Let's select interval. Here you can select our recording interval to be based off of distance, time, or resolution. Distance will record your track based on selected distance. Time will record your track based on a select time. And the resolution will record your track based on a variance setting. Let's select distance. Now you can see our record interval is set to distance. Now let's scroll down and select change. We can now change the distance interval at which the fish finder will record a point to build our track. Again, if you shorten the distance, the fish finder will record more points for a more exact track at the expense of more memory usage. Let's head back to our track options menu and scroll down and select track color. As you can see we have a large assortment of colors to choose from black, dark red, dark green, dark yellow, dark blue, dark magenta, dark cyan, light gray, dark gray, red, green, yellow, blue, magenta, cyan, and white. Now we're going to look at how to clear the track log and all the associated points. From our waypoint map press the menu key. Now scroll down and select track. Now scroll down and select clear track. As you can see, you get a warning message to ensure you want to delete all points in your track log. Select OK to clear all the tracks saved to your fish finder. Now one cool feature that the Garmin Striker Fish Finders has, and I'm sure this is something that a lot of viewers are going to want to learn and understand, is how to select and follow a past track. So let's take a look. From the waypoint map, press the menu key. Now scroll down and select track. Now scroll down and select follow track. As you can see here, we have some past tracks listed for us to choose from. Let's scroll down and select a track. As you can see, we're taken back to the waypoint map. And as we can see, our selected track's been highlighted, and a checkered flag has been added to indicate the end of our track. You can now follow the past track your vessel navigated to ensure a safe return. 
If you look in the upper portion of the screen, we'll see that we now show overlays for GPS speed, GPS heading, depth, distance to destination, estimated arrival time, and our current bearing. Now all these overlays are adjustable in the menu under overlay numbers, which we've covered in past classes. But this screen look and layout will be very familiar to you in the next classes when we cover routes. Earlier I told you that the Garmin Striker Fish Finder models with the quick draw contour mapping are going to have a few additional features. So let's switch over to the Garmin Striker Vivid 4 and look at some of those additional features. From the main menu let's scroll down and select the quick draw maps. Now let's press the menu key and scroll down and select tracks. Once again we have the option to turn our tracks on or off. Let's scroll down and select track display. Here we can see we have the ability to change our track colors. Now let's go back to our track menu. Let's scroll down and select active track. Here you'll see options for how our tracks are recorded. Again we can change our recording mode, recording interval, and our track color. Back at the track menu our next option allows you to delete your tracks. Our next feature is where our quick draw contour models differ from the base models with regard to tracks. And it's probably one of my favorite features within the quick draw contour mapping. Let's scroll down to and select follow active track. Now we're given the option of which track we'd like to follow. So let's select a track. And once a track is selected you'll be taken to the waypoint map where our track will be highlighted and a checkered flag will be added for our endpoint. Now let's talk about the ability to save tracks within the quick draw contour mapping. Let's scroll down and select Save Active Track. This will bring up a list of our active tracks. Now let's select our active track. Now we have the option to edit our track, delete our track, or follow our track. Let's select Edit Track. We now have the ability to change the name of our track, the color of our track, or save the track as a route, which is a great time saver and an invaluable tool in my opinion. Let's scroll down and select Save as Route. Now we will see our map has been populated with markers for each turn within our newly saved route. Let's go back to the track menu and scroll down and select Save Tracks. Here we'll see a list of all of our saved tracks. Now let's select the saved track. We'll have the option to edit the track, delete the track, or follow the track. Let's select Follow Track. We now have the option to either follow our track forward or backwards depending on our needs in starting location and destination. Once we select forward or backwards again we'll be taken back to our map and the track will be highlighted with a checkered flag to indicate the track endpoint. That's a wrap for class number 7. I hope you learned something new about the tracks on your Garmin Striker Fish Finder. And as always, if there's still any questions, be sure to comment down below. And don't forget to hit that like button, share with all your friends, and we'll see you next time on the water.